Uh, there's a lot of stories we could tell, all of you could tell, because you're all friends of his. But ladies and gentlemen, the best way for me to start is I'm Joe Biden, and I'm from Delaware by way of Pennsylvania, and because of Fritz Hollings by way of South Carolina. He ended up taking a chance on me. He saw something in me that I wasn't sure existed, but he believed in me. And I can say without fear of contradiction that uh, that made me believe more in myself, the fact that he believed in me, Joe. And I'm sure he did the same to a lot of you and the thousands of people in this great state. He believed in them, and he gave them confidence. Looking back, I thought, uh, if this powerful senator thought I could be a senator, well, maybe I really can do this. Maybe I really have a shot. He was also there for me when I was at the bottom. Six weeks after election, I got a phone call. I was interviewing people in Washington for staff and uh, saying that the poor young first responder got put in the phone. The young woman just blurted out, you got to come home. Your wife and daughter just been killed. A tractor trailer broadsided them and killed them. Your sons may not make it. Well, he was there then. Aside from my family, the first people to bring me back from that black hole that I found myself in were Fritz and Pizzi. And that's not hyperbole. That's literally true. He knew how to change as well. He changed. He learned. As he learned, he changed. One of the best times we saw Fritz was in — one of the last times I saw him was in 2017 for this uh, statue celebration in Charleston, where he asked — Noah and I checked it out at the time. No one had ever done this before. Asked for their name to be taken off of a building of honor, and someone else he thought more worthy his name be put on it. Your dad did that. That's rare. That's him. The Warring Federal Courthouse. That's what it's now called. And we dedicated a statue to Fritz in that magnificent garden behind the, war the house, the, uh, the courthouse. It reminded all of us of how he insisted on renaming the courthouse for a judge whose dissent provided the lone voice on the side of the Sumter 60 and changed the course of history of South Carolina. 